Saw dudes. Bungie just buffed Consecration last week in update 7.5.3. While I don't think it needed a buff, it is a welcome change and one that I am having a blast with. Bungie increased the first wave's travel distance up to 20 meters, the height of the second slam by about 1 meter, its travel distance to 20 meters, and travel speed. All of these changes make Consecration a valuable ad clear and champion killing tool. Today's build will pair all of these amazing buffs with Pyrogale Gauntlets for the ultimate Frenzied Flame cosplay. Less yapping and more build crafting. Let's get started. The game loop for the build is somewhat reminiscent of Bonk Hammer. All you have to do is run up to enemies, slide, then activate your powered melee ability twice. This will create two waves of flames, with the second igniting all scorched enemies for a massive Tarantino explosion. The rest of the build serves to support this action. Use your rally barricade to create cover and weaken some adds. If necessary, throw a grenade to scorch more enemies before using a consecration melee. Then use your one and done super and kill a big boy. Rinse and repeat. The only super we will be using today is Burning Maul due to Pyrogale's exotic perk. With Pyrogale's equipped, it actually turns a super into a one-off super for good DPS rotations. It can room clear due to the homing cyclones. I chose to go with Rally Barricade for the lower cooldown since it can help with ability regeneration with our mod setup. Throwing Hammer is still the best choice for the melee ability despite us not using it much. It can be used indefinitely, assuming it's picked up after use, and essentially allows for two choices when approaching combat. Thermite Grenade is the preferred choice in this setup. It's great for applying Scorch to groups of adds and has a long enough duration to lock down hallways for good CC. The aspects for this build are somewhat flexible. The required one is Consecration, which lets us perform a sliding melee attack that launches a wave of solar energy that scorches enemies and launches us into the air. While airborne, the melee ability can be activated again to slam the ground, releasing another wider wave that causes scorched enemies to ignite regardless of the amount of stacks that they have. This will be the primary source of our AoE burst damage. The second aspect could be either Roaring Flames or Soul Invictus. Roaring Flames provides a stacking ability damage buff through solar ability or ignition kills. At the maximum of 3 stacks, there is a 73% total damage increase. Soul Invictus causes solar ability kills and scorched enemy kills to create sunspots. Sunspots deal damage over time and apply scorch. Standing in 1 grants a Soul Invictus buff for 5 seconds, granting Restoration times 1 and 100% additional base grenade and melee regenerate. If you are concerned about healing, use a Soul Invictus aspect. In my opinion, I think Soul Invictus is a safer option since it provides Restoration and more ability regen. The extra damage from Roaring Flames is nice, but unnecessary even in Grandmaster Nightfall content. The fragments for the build are Ember of Char, Eruption, Searing, and Torches. Char causes Ignitions to apply 40 Scorch to enemies damaged by it. Eruption increases the radius of Ignitions by 20%. Searing causes killing Scorch targets to refund melee energy based on enemy rank. Finally, Ember of Torches causes powered melee hits to grant us and allies Radiant for 8 seconds. Alright, now let's go over the Frenzied Flame Armor. On the helmet, I used Harmonic Siphon, Special Ammo Finder, and Hands On. For Pyrogale Gauntlets, I went with Heavy Handed, Font of Vigor, and Impact Induction. The chestplate had melee damage resistance, concussive dampener, and harmonic resistance. On the greaves, I chose to go with recuperation and two copies of solar weapon surge. And on the mark was reaper, time dilation, and outreach. We're playing titan, so we have to max our resilience. This lowers our barricade cooldown and also increases our effective HP. Next, get your strength stat to 70. This will be maxed out upon picking up an orb of power thanks to Font of Vigor, reducing our consecration cooldown. The rest of the stat points can be put into discipline and intellect. If you're enjoying the video so far, consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate the support. This build has three weapon loadouts. As usual, there are timestamps in the description and chapters in the video to help you navigate. Weapon loadout 1 uses Conditional Finality, Callus Mini Tool, and Apex Predator. This set of weapons can be brought into any content and slay out. However, it is somewhat limited to close range engagements. Conditional Finality is a Doom shotgun that can help us act clear and deal with unstoppable champions. The gun can work with Ember of Char, causing ignitions it creates to spread Scorch to nearby enemies. This is great for setting up more ignitions via Consecration and refunding melee energy via Ember of Searing. While the Stasis Shot doesn't do much more than freeze targets, it does buff the damage enemies take from our abilities slightly. It's a great gun to have in general. Callus Mini Tool is the old reliable SMG. Its role in the build is to provide great close range damage and spread Scorch to assist in ignition procs and melee regeneration. The role you can craft on this gun is Arrowhead Break, Flared Magwell, Threat Detector, and Incandescent. If you are concerned about staying alive, consider subbing out Threat Detector for Unrelenting. Either way, this gun will shred anything up close and makes melee spamming possible. Finally, we have Apex Predator, adding more boom to our explosive build. I figured I would rip the bandaid off in the first weapon loadout for this video. I do feel that this weapon loadout takes advantage of it more due to the other weapons being strictly used for close range engagements. The role you want to craft for this rocket launcher is quick launch, impact casing, reconstruction, and bait and switch. Weapon loadout 2 has Pardonar Dust, Polaris Lance, and Briar's Contempt. I used this loadout for the GM run you are seeing in the background, minus Briar's Contempt because my aim was pretty bad that day. 
Pardon Our Dust is our main crowd control tool and is extremely handy. The role I use is Quick Launch, Disorienting Grenades, Auto Loading Holster, and Vorpal Weapon. This grenade launcher is not meant to deal big damage. Instead, it's meant to blind enemies and render them unable to move or fire. As you likely saw in the footage already, exploding a grenade near a group of enemies makes them easy targets for Consecrate Slams. This is perfect in harder content since enemies can't fight back at all. Polaris Lance is our long range option for this loadout and is perfect for giving us the balance we need to make the build work well. Every precision shot refunds a bullet to the mag and loads up to a solar explosive projectile. After hitting 4 precision shots, the payload gets loaded and is shot out on the next trigger pull. The payload explodes after impact, dealing moderate damage, but more importantly, scorches enemies on hit. Polaris Lance can act as an Agler weapon, backup DPS weapon, and a means to regen our melee energy. To round off this loadout, we have Briar's Contempt, a linear fusion rifle that fires in a 3 burst pattern. While Cataclysmic is also an option, I feel like it's not as potent as it once was given the slight bait and switch nerf, which allows Briar's Contempt to shine a bit more. There are a ton of perk combos to choose from on this LFR, but I believe the best to be Arrowhead Break, Enhanced Battery, Rewind Rounds, and High Impact Reserves. I know this sounds odd, but it works. Rewind Rounds returns bullets to the mag after emptying based on the number of hits which keeps HIR in a perpetually active state. This is much easier to activate than Focus Fury, hence my recommendation. Weapon Loadout 3 is for my Pyromaniacs, those that just want to see the world burn. We will be using Deliverance, Abyss Defiant, and Dragon's Breath. Deliverance, like Pardon Our Dust, mainly serves as a crowd control tool. The role I use is Fluted Barrel, Enhanced Battery, Demolitionist, and Chill Clip. Chill Clip allows this gun to stun Overload and Unstoppable Champions, and Demo grants us grenade energy on kill. We can use this to insta-reload the gun, and clear trash fodder with their micro grenades. Next up, we have Abyss Defiant. This AR will be our mid-range Scorch applicator. The perk combo for this gun will be Heal Clip and Incandescent. Heal Clip grants us and allies cure on a reload after kills. This is super useful in high-end content where grabbing orbs may not be safe. Incandescent spread Scorch, allowing for a consecration prime or melee regeneration. Finally, we have Dragon's Breath. This rocket launcher spews jet fuel on contact, applying Scorch and causing ignitions. Igniting targets adds fuel to the next shot, causing it to deal more damage and apply more Scorch. This meshes perfectly with our loadout and can serve as Ad Clear, Champion Clear, or Boss DPS. If you want to support a teammate's DPS, Yalahorn is just as good in this slot. I hope you guys enjoyed the build as much as I did. While I know Consecration does not have the same ease of use as old Bonkhammer, it still puts in solid numbers. I actually like how it plays more since you are required to strategically use your abilities to pull off explosions. The rest of the footage is the GM run from the other day as testing. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and happy farming.